Financial independence retire early, otherwise known as FIRE, is a movement that involves saving up a good portion of your income in order to become financially independent as early as possible in life. And although some people may have the goal of completely retiring as soon as possible, many people choose to pursue FIRE out of a desire that we all should have, which is not have to rely on a job in order to cover all of our living expenses. It could also mean working only part-time, which would give you more free time to do the things that you love to do. Or you can simply choose to not quit your job at all and instead enjoy earning even more money with an additional income stream. Successfully achieving FIRE is not an easy thing to do, especially with all this talk of a recession on the horizon. And whether or not you can achieve it all depends on a lot of different factors. It requires a lot of discipline on your part because you have to consistently save a good portion of your income every month. It can also mean sacrificing lifestyle choices such as eating out less and going on fewer vacations. But there's nothing that can replace the peace of mind that comes with knowing that if you were to get fired tomorrow, you wouldn't have to worry about paying your bills. One thing that people don't typically take into consideration, especially younger people, are medical expenses. Did you know that a couple retiring today can expect to pay a total of $315,000 in medical expenses over the course of their retirement? There's a few different ways you can achieve FIRE. Some people choose to build up large positions in index funds, some people prefer buying rental properties, and some people choose a mixture of different options. In my opinion, if you couldn't tell based off the title of this video, I think dividend investing is not only the best, but the easiest way of achieving FIRE. I'm not trying to say index funds and real estate investing is bad, I do like both of those options as well. And if you want to diversify your portfolio, then both of those are good strategies that you can pursue simultaneously. But when comparing how feasible it is to become financially independent if you're not already wealthy, to me dividend investing is the superior choice. Most people can buy real estate, but real estate investing requires a lot of knowledge and research before getting started. Buying a property in a place that people will want to rent, maintenance, and destructive tenants are just some of the things you'll have to keep in mind when investing in rental properties. With index funds, being able to retire early would require you to build up a huge position in the first place in order to make withdrawals to cover your expenses. For example, if you have $500,000 invested in a simple S&P 500 index fund that averages an 8% annual return and you want to withdraw $4,000 a month, at best you'll run out of money in less than 17 years. But with dividends, if you invest in a wide range of higher yielding investments like some of the ones I like to pursue, then you don't need $500,000 saved up. If you want that same $4,000 per month in dividends instead of having to sell an investment's principal, you can achieve that with a lot less. For example, with PDI, which is a closed end fund that's never cut its dividend, to get $4,000 a month, you need less than $360,000 saved up. Obviously, it's not wise to put all of your money in just one investment. You'll want to spread it across different investment types, including ones that do provide dividend growth. But this is why I pursue higher yielding dividend investments. So today we're going to go through the steps needed to achieve financial independence with dividends. The first step you'll need to take to achieve fire through dividends is to commit as soon as possible. The longer you wait in life, the longer it'll take to achieve financial freedom. Every investor I've ever met tells me they wish they would have started investing sooner because compounding interest is what's going to help boost your returns. You've probably seen this quote from Albert Einstein, which says that compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. You'd be surprised at just how big of a difference it makes getting started five years earlier in life. Use any retirement investment calculator you find online and adjust the years by five, and you can see this small step can make a big difference down the road. This part is also going to require a couple extra steps. You'll need to change your lifestyle to a certain degree depending on how much you currently make. Disciplining and teaching yourself to spend less money and save more each month will take time. It's not an easy thing to do for a lot of people, but learning how to scale back your lifestyle is extremely important if you want to achieve FIRE. Remind yourself that someday, when all your friends and family are either broke or not able to enjoy their later years due to not saving enough, you'll be in a much better position than they are because you were able to educate and discipline yourself earlier in life. So commit to FIRE as early in life as possible, learn to scale back your spending, and save as much money as you feasibly can. It's also important to set a goal for your FIRE journey. Do you want to earn 3k a month in dividends? 4k? Having a clear goal will help you stay on track during this process. The next step is to begin improving your initial financial situation, and I describe that as the following. First, I always recommend starting an emergency fund if you don't already have one, and I do this before investing. You don't want to get caught off guard by an expense you didn't see coming, and if you go straight to investing, you'll end up having to sell your investments to cover an emergency anyways. The typical emergency fund has at least $1,000 in it, but if you're capable, a lot of people recommend saving up at least enough to cover a few months worth of expenses. Things like your family situation and where you live are going to impact this a lot. This is also the step where you should open up a brokerage account. I personally use Fidelity and Vanguard because these platforms have longer track records than some of these newer platforms and they typically have better customer service. 
Once you've changed your spending lifestyle and you have an emergency fund and a brokerage account set up, the next step is to both simultaneously begin investing and working on reducing your debt. This is going to differ depending on what you personally want to do. I think it's better to try to eliminate all debt with the exception of your mortgage before investing. But if you want to start investing in dividend stocks during this step, then that's up to you. The sooner you can pay off your debt means that you'll have even more money each month to invest in dividend stocks, which is why I think this is the better option. It's also during this step that I'd recommend taking advantage of your employer's 401k match if they have it and contributing to an IRA. The match is free money, so it's best to take advantage of it, and your IRA contributions are going to be a big help in retirement. You just can't touch it until you're 59 and a half. But if you're trying to live off dividends before turning 59 and a half, definitely don't blow this off. When picking your dividend investments for your individual account and an IRA, there's a lot to choose from. You got your standard dividend stocks like consumer staples and a lot of different ETFs that offer dividend growth or income depending on your preference. But you've also got higher yielding investment types like real estate investment trusts, business development companies, closed end funds, master limited partnerships, among others. Typically the higher the yield, the less growth these investments will provide. I'd recommend investing across a wide range of different investment types and everyone's portfolio should include holdings that provide dividend growth. When you first start, you'll want to make sure that you're reinvesting all of your dividends, but someday when you're living off dividends, you won't see any more growth if all of your holdings don't increase their payouts. The amount you should dedicate in your portfolio towards dividend growth depends on your age and personal preferences. I'd recommend at the very least, even if you're already in retirement, that 20% of your investments should have growth. If you're younger, like in your 20s, then it makes sense to have even more than half of your dividend holdings be dedicated towards companies and funds that have been able to grow their dividends consistently over time. But remember, reinvesting all of your dividends will ensure that all of your holdings will keep growing. I don't have time to go into detail on all these different investment types. There's plenty of videos on my channel that talk about all of these though, but a good general rule to keep in mind is that the higher the yield, the more risk involved. But there are plenty of higher yielding dividend holdings that have never cut their dividends before. It's also important not to pursue the investments that are simply offering the highest dividend yields. You'll need to do background research into each investment to make sure they don't have a history of cutting their dividends. This is the number one mistake I see new dividend and income investors make when they start out, which is they invest in whatever's offering the highest yield without knowing what they're investing in or if it has a history of cutting their dividends. Orchid Island Capital is a really popular holding that I see new investors put their money in because of its high yield, but they don't seem to be aware of just how badly this stock's share price has collapsed and how many times they've reduced their dividends. End. So you have to care about what you're putting your money into and you have to do your own research. Now that you're investing and you're working on or you've already eliminated your debt, the next step in the FIRE process is to increase your income. You can obviously do this while working on the previous step, but to achieve financial independence even earlier, you're going to want to take steps to increase your monthly income. This might involve pursuing a higher paying job, getting a part time job, or getting a side hustle. Years ago I used to be an Uber driver in the evenings after coming home from my full time job. But with high gas prices and Uber reducing their driver pay, this isn't something that I'd recommend doing for most people anymore. But just googling side hustles will give you some good ideas, which might include selling stuff on eBay, tutoring, or doing jobs on TaskRabbit, which can help increase the amount of money you'll have to save each month. Once you've done all these steps, the only thing left to do is wait. Keep saving, investing, and pursuing higher income opportunities. Stay the course by not being tempted to make large purchases like brand new cars, expensive vacations, or a house that's bigger than what you need. I'm not saying don't ever indulge, but training yourself to be happy with less in life is a huge part of the process. As I was making this video, there was so much more information I wanted to include in this, but I ran out of time. So I'll probably make an extended video version of this that's longer. If you're interested in learning about higher yielding investment types, then feel free to check out some of the other videos on this channel. There's over 100 videos dedicated to higher yielding investments with the goal of creating high streams of cash flow. But hopefully this video did create a roadmap for those of you who are interested. Everyone's situation is going to be different, but remember like I said, achieving fire through dividends is in my opinion the best route to becoming financially independent. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, take care.